Got a good crowd in here. Must be a big week. Um, appreciate everybody coming out. Obviously, uh, before we get started on football, just want to congratulate Coach Staley on the great win uh, yesterday against UConn. Was able to watch a little bit of it in my office in between uh, meetings. What a fantastic uh, comeback win and awesome performance. Uh, uh, by Ms. Boston. Had a chance to meet her earlier this year and, and uh, really cool watching them play yesterday. Uh, best of luck. I know I congratulated them over the weekend, but want to congratulate our women's soccer program and and uh, their, for their big victory last week and playing in the Elite Eight quarterfinals, I guess, this weekend uh, for the opportunity to go to the College Cup. So wish them well and, and uh, all of our other sports and Coach Martin and, and men's basketball tonight. I've clearly got to talk with Frank about his basketball scheduling philosophy because I think this is two weeks in a row he's got a game going on at the same time as Carolina calls uh, which we have going on tonight as well so we're gonna have to plan better in the future but if you uh, can't be at the basketball arena for some reason encourage you to come out to Backstreet's Grill for Carolina calls uh, tonight with myself and and uh, and Todd Ellis but I uh, really appreciate all of our head coaches here at Carolina and the text messages and phone calls uh, I got from them uh, after our game Saturday night, you know, I heard from pretty much every head coach, I think, uh, at this university and Coach Staley all the way from down in the Bahamas and uh, really appreciate their support. And one of the many things that makes this place so special is just the uh, the way we all pull for each other and we're all uh, uh, seeking one thing and and uh, that's for Carolina to be the very, very best. So honored to be here and, and be a part of this. Like Steve said, uh, 200 tickets remain for this weekend. We need it sold out. We need it rocking. I want to thank our fans again for the amazing uh, environment last weekend against Auburn. That was uh, fantastic. Our players fed off your energy. And hopefully the way we played created even more energy for our fans in the stands. As I say all the time, we had some great recruits that were here on Saturday night. And and uh, they raved about it, even in pregame. I mean, we had a young man here on his official visit. And, and uh, as soon as I got to the stadium after the walk, I walked out on the field and he grabbed me and was just blown away with the walk and what SEC football means and, and what uh, the environment in that stadium is like. And that was, that was two hours before the game. And then if you can imagine what his reaction was after the game, it was even better. So we'll need that again this weekend and, and uh, looking forward to a rocking williams Bryce as well. Uh, Injury-wise, we're in pretty good shape. Uh, same thing from Sunday night. Uh, Leggett, I know, got banged up against Auburn. We expect him to be okay for Saturday. Uh, I think I used the word questionable for Cam Smith on Sunday night. I would say he's still questionable. He was out there at practice today but was a little bit limited. Uh, but other than that, we're in pretty good shape from an injury standpoint. And, and we need everybody uh, this week as well. This is a uh, fantastic Clemson team that is playing their best football, uh, clearly. Uh, they've got, right now, they've gotten better as the season's gone on. Uh, won four in a row, I believe, six out of their last seven. Uh, you look at what they did against Wake Forest. Uh, I think Wake was ranked in the top ten in the country, I believe, going into that game last weekend. And, and Clemson dominated them. Uh, 333 yards rushing. Uh, 543 yards of offense, 7 of 11 on third down last week, uh, two running backs that went over 100 yards, not just over 100, but one went for 191 and the other one went for 113. Quarterback continues to get better every week. Uh, defensively, they're, they're fantastic. Uh, I mean, they're all over the place. So much respect watching them play, just how multiple they are. I mean, I don't know how they coach at all because, I mean, they do so much defensively. It's impressive to watch. And when they're disruptive, when you're top, when you're ranked in the top four in the country defensively in sacks and tackle for losses, tackles for loss, that's pretty amazing. Uh, so disruptive, to say the least, with their defense. Uh, they got fantastic personnel. Offensively, they're getting better each week. Their last four games, they've scored 30, 30. 44 and 48 in their last four games. So they are certainly peaking at the right time. I think Dabo has done an amazing job this season. I saw where Dave Clawson at Wake Forest said it may have been his best coaching job that he's done at Clemson, and, and I disagree. Uh, I saw where Dabo was very kind and mentioned something about me in regards to being the coach of the year in this conference. I think you could certainly make the case that he should be the coach of the year in their conference with the injuries they've overcome uh, all over the field, so many new faces going into the season, and uh, you know, uh, uh, 
struggle by their standards a little bit earlier in the season to just continue to get better each week, to be sitting here at eight wins, and they still have a realistic opportunity to win the ACC this season if a couple things go the right way for them this weekend. And if they get into that game in Charlotte, fully expect them to to win that if they do. So it's a testament to the great job they've done. And, and uh, I've got a ton of respect for him. I consider him a friend. Uh, he's been very good to me since I took over here at Carolina. His wife has been very good to my wife, Emily, and I uh, think a lot of them. And, we're both competitors and, and um, uh, looking forward to the, a fantastic environment Saturday night. Excited to be back, a part, be back a part of this rivalry. I've been a part of some great ones in my time here at, uh, as a coach, I should say, starting with you know when I was here as an assistant coach before. I think it's pretty cool that Dabo's the head coach now because I can remember when we were both assistant coaches here. He at Clemson, he was the recruiting coordinator and assistant coach. I was the recruiting coordinator and assistant coach here. Uh, he was the interim head coach. I remember going up there on a rainy day in Clemson, and they beat us, and he ended up getting the job the next day, and the rest is history. So pretty cool that it's kind of come full circle in some ways that we were both previously assistant coaches at our schools, and now we're both um, the head coach. Done a fantastic job uh, there for sure, and, and it's great to be right back in the middle of this rivalry. It's one of the great ones in all of college athletics. Uh, I've been a part of the Egg Bowl in Mississippi. I've been a part of Oklahoma, Texas, and – Virginia, Virginia Tech, and Georgia, Georgia Tech. But this one is right up there at the top, and, and I can't wait for Saturday night. Like always, we're going to need a great week of preparation. Got a big challenge, but excited for the opportunity. So with that, be glad to take any questions you guys and ladies have. Shane, uh, you know, some of your predecessors in the job have said, well, you know, Clemson's a big game, but there's SEC games. The goal is to win an SEC championship. As a first-year head coach, how do you treat this game, especially for having been in this rivalry before? <laughs> Yeah, I think there's a fine line. Um, you know, it's not just another game. I mean, let's be realistic. We we understand what this game means to the people of this state and uh, the people in each program. But I do think you have to be careful about making – putting it too much on a higher pedestal than the other games. I mean, I've, I know there's some programs across the country that have a, a countdown clock – 365 days a year for this rivalry. We will never, ever, ever, ever do anything like that here at Carolina. And that's no disrespect to Clemson. But, I mean, we talk all the time about nameless, faceless opponents and treating everybody the same and, and us being at our very best each week and not worried about the opponent. And we just don't say that when we're playing Eastern Illinois. It's the same thing. Now, I'm not an idiot. I understand that this is an intense rivalry and that for the players on both sides and the coaches on both sides, it's – it's different, but uh, to answer your question, I mean, we uh, it's not any less important than playing, you know, Georgia, and it's not any more important than playing Troy and, and, and from my standpoint and from our preparation standpoint, and that's not bulletin board material. So Shane Beamer didn't just say that Troy is more important than Clemson. That's not what I said, so please don't start twisting comments and all of a sudden that pops up on Twitter. What I mean, though, is we prepare the same way every week, but certainly – I don't need to spend a lot of extra time in my office coming up with uh, motivational tactics this week. Our guys will be uh, uh, reared up and ready to go. Shane, with that being said, I mean, some of these guys that are in state, I think they, they understand the importance of this for you. Obviously, as an assistant coach back in the day here, you understand the importance of this game. Is that something you do bring up to some of these guys? And on top of that, have any former players this week reach out to you about this game? Uh, no former players, uh, yet, you know, I think Connor Shaw has communicated with quite a few of them and, and, you know, I'm sure they'll have messages for our guys as, as the week goes, uh, from, from that standpoint, they, they don't need to reach out to me. I know how they feel and, and, uh, uh, and how important this game is. And what was the first part of it, Mike? I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, and it's one of those I don't have to. Like, J.J. spoke to the team this morning before we broke it down. And J.J.'s not even from South Carolina. But J.J., when, he, when we broke the team down at midfield, I mean, he had everybody in the huddle, and he was talking about the importance of it. And, uh, you know, I mean, I think the guys that aren't from this state, they, they learn pretty quickly how intense this rivalry is. If not, they'll figure it out pretty quickly on Saturday night if they haven't already. Uh, but, I mean, they all come from rivalries and high schools, and, and I think they've – 
followed college athletics enough to know what Clemson and Car uh, Carolina and Clemson mean. And, and um, you know, our guys certainly know that. And, and we make sure they know that, you know, going back to what David said, I mean, it's the next game, but it's also – it's a little bit more intense than 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 just any other game because it is your in-state rival. But we talked about it Sunday in our team meeting. I mean, that's what makes college athletics great. Our, I mean, this is my favorite weekend of the year in college football because it's rivalry weekend, and and um, you 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 have the rivalries going on across the country, which is just uh, it's fantastic. And what's make what makes college athletics special? Shane, DK, and uh, Nick were both talking about how I mean they've been both been here three years. I think neither one of them has played against Clemson. Obviously, you got freshmen and, and sophomores that haven't played in it. I guess just how different is that dynamic in terms in terms of you know having a number of guys and a big number of guys that maybe haven't played in this game before? Yeah, um, you know you hope it's uh, you hope it's not a big dynamic <laughs> since uh, you just said that. Uh, you know, I mean, I think our guys have played in in big games and they've been around the program enough to know you know that. Uh, how elevated this one is and things like that. And it'll be, you know, a little bit of a different, it'll, last weekend was a great environment, but it'll be even, you know, amped up even more uh, on Saturday night. But uh, we've got a mature group of guys. And, and the biggest thing for us is whether you've played in this game, not played in this game. I think sometimes in these rivalry games, sometimes you can get almost like too emotional and just get out there and lose your mind and forget about once that game kicks off, it's still, you know, football and it's about the 22 guys out there on the field competing against each other. Will you get a chance to watch the Egg Bowl on Thursday? Absolutely. You got a um, pick? Uh, no, I don't. I don't want to upset anybody in the SEC. It'll be interesting because my wife's obviously a state grad. My in-laws are coming in town, so they'll be here for Thanksgiving. Uh, so I can't wait to uh, can't wait to watch it. Should be a fantastic game and to uh, – Two interesting personalities at head coach for sure, so it should be fun. Hey, Shane, you talk about the rivalries you've been involved in. Well, what do you tell folks at um, other schools or other parts of the region about the Carolina-Clemson rivalry, uh, the one thing or maybe a couple of things that makes it unique? Yeah, I think it's just uh, um, the intensity Obviously, for sure, 365, and 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 I think the one thing that's unique in this rivalry is it's it's so many other sports, uh, and and you say, well, isn't that a big rivalry? But yes and no. I mean, Oklahoma, Oklahoma State was big, but it wasn't like people just lived and died with what happened with the weekend baseball results and softball results when Oklahoma played Oklahoma State or 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 whatnot. But with this, it's just so much. There's so much intensity on every sport uh, here at Carolina when we play Clemson, which I do think is unique compared to other schools. And, and I think it's just the fact that you're in a state where the, uh, there's no pro sports, you know, necessarily right here in South Carolina. So it's Carolina, Clemson, and, and, and it's a small state, you know, very much like Mississippi in a lot of ways. You know, it's a small state, and, and you have these two, these two programs, and one's in the ACC and one's in the SEC, and it's a bitter rivalry, but – uh, you know, it makes it exciting, but it's uh, it's two programs that you know I have. I know I have you know great respect for for their program and and um, you know appreciate the way uh, they do things and and the way they play. Shane, when you think about this rivalry when you were here last time, are there some things on the field, some moments that stand out to you that that are locked back in there? Oh yeah. Um, 2007, I can remember watching their field goal sail through the uprights that kept us out of a bowl game in 2007. Uh, 2008, was that, that was, David Dabo got the job in 10? No, that was, that was the year. That was the year he got it. So 2008, rainy day, he gets the job. Um, 2009, I remember all the talk that week was you can't kick it to C.J. Spiller. And I was coaching special teams. You can't kick it to C.J. Spiller when you kick off. And I'm like, well, um, I'll be dang. I mean, they got Jacoby Ford and Andre Ellington back there in front of them. Like, who do you want me to kick it to? Um, and we kicked it to him on the opening kickoff. DJ and Stefan and all those guys were excited. And then we had a penalty because we were all sides. And I, I had a voice in my head that a coach told me a long time ago, nothing good happens on a re-kick. And I knew in my mind, don't do it again, Shame. Don't do it again. But then you had DJ Swearinger and those guys are like, kick it. Kick it to him again. We'll go cover it again. 
we kick it to him again. I think he went 85 yards for a touchdown the other way. So that one sticks with me. Thanks for bringing that one up. Won the game, uh, thank God. And then uh, we went up there in 2010, and, and that was obviously a fantastic season because we knew we were going to play the, play in the SEC championship game the next week. And and I uh, went up there on a Saturday night and got after him pretty good. I remember Antonio Allen, I think. Uh, I can still see it in my head. I think we brought an edge pressure off the edge, and he peeled with the back and intercepted it and ran it back for a touchdown. And that was a fun night, you know, my last uh, – my last time being in that rivalry. So yeah, it's, uh, some good moments and not so good, not some not so good moments, but great players. And, and, uh, and uh, you know, I was, when I left here it was 2010 and, and Clemson was just at that point getting ready to take off. Cause I went to Virginia tech and then we played on the next year in the ACC championship game. And, and obviously what they've done since then speaks for itself, but yeah, some good memories, but, but a lot of, uh, <laughs> a lot of not so good ones, unfortunately. Earlier today, Coach Sweeney was saying that he remembers your son asking him for some gear uh, <laughs> several years ago. Uh, wondering if your son still has that Clemson gear. <laughs> he better not. And what, uh, what that relationship has been like with you and Dabo. And your, your son used to be a Clemson fan and all that stuff. Yeah, I uh, appreciate Dabo telling that story in his press conference. Um, uh, the, first of all, the, the relationship is fantastic. Um, I think that the world of him um, – he, like I said, he was an assistant coach at, at Clemson, and I was an assistant coach here, and 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 we both are kind of tied to Woody McCorvey, who's on the staff at Clemson, and and Woody was the man responsible for me going from the University of Tennessee as a graduate assistant to Mississippi State. Uh, Woody was a was a coach at Tennessee at the time, and took me to uh, Mississippi State and recommended me to Sylvester Croom, who I didn't know. Um, and got tied in with Coach Croom, and, and the rest is history. But Dabo and Coach Sweeney uh, and Woody obviously go way back, so we have that mutual friend. And then I've just enjoyed getting to know Dabo over the years. Uh, I've always had a ton of respect for him. And, and then throughout this process, he was, you know, fantastic to me. Um, reached out to me when my name was getting mentioned for this job, you know, to say I hope you get it and it would be great. And I talked to him. I think I did my press conference here on that Monday and literally I think twice that week after the press conference I talked to him, um, you know, uh, uh, even during the season. I mean, it's not like I'm calling him weekly, but we've had a couple of phone conversations during the season. I actually called him earlier this season and it was in the middle of his radio show, which I didn't know he did on Monday night. So he literally called me back during the commercial break and said, this is probably the first time in the history of this rivalry with, that both head coaches are talking during the other one's radio show. Um, but it was something that I just had a question about. Uh, so I think a lot of him and, and his family, Kathleen's awesome. Uh, like I said, I know they do things the right way and I hope he knows that we're going to do things the right way in this program and he's in it for the right reasons and and i think the thing with him is he's very genuine and what you see is is what you get in regards to hunter my son uh my son uh being at oklahoma obviously he was an oklahoma fan but for whatever reason i don't know i didn't do it but he started liking Cle trevor lawrence and clemson and he likes a winner so obviously when clemson was ranked number one a lot of those years he's he's he jumps on the bandwagon so uh, he had a he was a Clemson he liked watching Clemson I don't want to go so far as to call him a Clemson fan uh, but my, he was playing flag football in Norman and was the quarterback for the flag football team so he had a pretty good little flag football game where he threw a touchdown pass and ran a touchdown pass so I sent the video to Dabo um, because Hunter wanted me to send it to him because he was going to go play for him one day, he told me. And uh, this is before I got this job, clearly. All right. And uh, so ever since then, uh, Dabo texted me back and told him how awesome he was and he was going to come recruit him. So when my name was being mentioned for this job, Dabo, he called me. Uh, I think they were getting ready to play Virginia Tech, and he called me. It was like a Wednesday afternoon. And he's like, look, I want to wish you luck. I hope you get it. But my only question is, if you do get this job, who's Hunter coming to play football for in, um, in 10 years. And so that's what he said. And, and, uh, Hunter gets a kick out of it uh, as well. But again, you know, think a lot of him and, and what he's about and, and a lot of the coaches in that program, Danny Pearman worked for my dad at Virginia tech for a long time. I've known Woody for a long time and, and, and a lot of those guys on that staff. <laughs> he loves telling that story now. Uh, Brad Johnson was obviously in here a minute ago talking about, how he's still kind of trying to figure out what he's going to do for next year. 
just generally speaking, whether it's him or other guys who have the benefit of, of utilizing an extra year because of last year, how nice is it for them? And I guess conversely, how challenging has it been for, for you guys as coaches to kind of try to juggle that whole dynamic? Yeah, it is. It's, it's, it's a delicate situation because you don't want to have too many conversations about it because you're focused on the season and, and the upcoming week and you want their minds on that, but then you also need to, you need to uh, certainly be planning from a recruiting standpoint because it affects your numbers and, and things like that. And, um, you know, it's, it's fantastic that a lot of these guys have the opportunity to come back. You'll see some people on Saturday night that will take, will go through uh, uh, senior night or senior day ceremonies that uh, may come back next year that haven't made a final decision. And, uh, and whatnot. So those are all things that we'll sit down and talk about, you know, as, as we get through this week. It's fantastic that a guy like Brad could come back. We hope he does. Uh, I think his best football is still in front of him, but certainly it's 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 challenging just uh, recruiting wise, you know, because there's only so many scholarships available. So there's a lot of guys that we're still in on that we're recruiting that, you know, you 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 you've got to create a spot somewhere. And there's a lot of guys like Brad that we're not just going to push out the door to bring some, uh, to bring a recruit in. Um, but you know, each, we, each, uh, each situation is different and we're going to sit down with all those guys and, and help those guys make the very best decision possible for, for them and their futures. I'm glad there was no Clemson, Oklahoma, uh, college football playoff matchup or something like that. Yeah, I know. And I think a lot of that probably came from, he didn't like Alabama cause Alabama beat us in the orange bowl my first year at Oklahoma. So he kind of naturally chose Clemson and and, uh, and got into it. So, yeah, I guess there was one year if we had won in the semifinals, we were going to have to play him. But he um, uh, uh, he's all Carolina yeah. right now. Because I asked him the other night, what are you going to do if Dabo asks you? And I think he's ready for the question. Yeah. So um, it, seems, it, it seems like <laughs> – He better be. <laughs> right. Train him up well. Um, it seems like with this defense, you're not only getting impact and then contributions from the returners, but – a guy like Carlin's has the big yeah. pass breakup the other night, and you're getting, you know, Michelle Styles played a lot of big minutes. What's it say about this defense and this defensive staff that not only the guys that are here are making impacts, but the guys you've brought into the portal and some of these new faces are making some Yeah, impact. great question. I'm glad you brought it up. I mean, we knew what uh, J.J. and Aaron Sterling and, and Jabari and Zach and those guys up front, you know, knew what those guys were about. But, you know, certainly – uh, you had RJ and Jalen Foster coming back at the safety position, but you had a lot of new faces, and, and Cam had some experience. But, you know, Darius Rush, uh, there was a lot of probably questions about. And then you got Marcellus Dial and Carlin Spatel and David Spalding and all these guys. I think it's, it's great, you know, that we identified these guys in the, in the transfer portal and felt like they had the ability to come help us. And, frankly, I don't know if – I don't know of how many SEC schools would have recruited a defensive back from Assumption College as hard as we did. And that's no disrespect to Assumption College, but I think some people may look at it and say, we're not taking some guy from Division the Division Three, Mike, two? Division Two. Division two. Sorry. I'm, you know, I know. I, no disrespect to you, but I'm saying it's good football. We looked at it and saw – we looked at it and saw a good football player and not necessarily where they're coming from. And you could sit there and look at it. There was great competition he was playing uh, at Assumption College. And, and we brought him in here, and he's worked his butt off. And he made – I mean, there was, I talked about it the other night. I talked about Jalen Foster's play, that he made the one-on-one -on -one tackle against Tank Bigsby to save a touchdown on that drive where they had the ball first and goal in the six and got no points out of it. Well, I think Spa – or uh, – CP's play over there on the sideline on that third down pass was just as big a play because, I mean, they're at midfield and about to get a first down and have some momentum right there. We get a stop and, and, and get off the field. I mean, it was huge. So I think it's a testament to uh, our recruiting department and being able to say that we'll go anywhere and everywhere to find guys and a uh, testament to the coaches for coaching those guys up and a testament to those guys and, and, and what they're about, you know, whether it be Spalding or CP or – or, uh, or or whoever, you know, Dial played some great snaps the other night as well. And they got to continue to get better. I mean, they got a big challenge this week against these receivers uh, and tight ends as well. Shane, you guys have obviously had some massive wins this year. But, you know, after losing six straight to Clemson, your first year in this program, how big would a win be over, over Clemson this year? 
It would be huge. I mean, it's big any every year. I mean, you always want to beat your rival. Uh, we've done some fantastic things this season, and and uh, you know we have goals still in front of us that we still want to accomplish. But you know, certainly uh, for like I said last week after we beat Auburn to get bowl eligible, I'd be extremely excited for our uh, seniors. You know, for them to be able to go out, and that's any year. I mean, anytime you beat your rival in the last game, it certainly makes uh, the rest of the year. Uh, more enjoyable, you know, for sure. But we'll, uh, uh, it would be big, but every win we've had this year has been big. You mentioned earlier how, how much Clemson does de defensively. How, how unique is that? And what, what does that uh, give for you in terms of your emotion, anxiety, or whatever, with, with your offense uh, going up against that? Um, quite a bit. Uh, I mean, they're they're good. I mean, Georgia's the best team in the country and scored three points against them. I mean, the only reason they scored 10 was they ran a touchdown back for a touchdown. So we know the weapons that Georgia has on offense, and they scored three points against them. And and I know that Clemson's had some injuries since then, but they haven't had that, that many uh, on defense. I mean, you watch uh, – uh, Murphy and Thomas, the way they rush the passer, and I got so much respect for the linebackers and the way they play. I mean, they're so in the defensive backs. I mean, they're 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 really really good. They're really really athletic. They're really really well coached. They're really really disruptive. Um, you know, I mean, we know what Wake Forest is about offensively, and it seems like they were in the backfield before the quarterback wanted to throw the football every single time Saturday watching that game. Uh, so it's certainly a challenge. And and they're they're really good. They're really well coached. And then they're just so multiple. I mean, normally you could, you know, go out and say, okay, we're going to run these plays. And when we know when we line up in this formation, they're going to be in this front, and there's a pretty good chance they're going to be in this coverage. And you're probably going to get these two or three pressures out of it. With these guys, I mean, it's like you got to be – careful in what you do offensively because you can't practice everything against every look that you're going to get from Coach Venables and the defense. I mean, they're so multiple. You just got to be really sound in what you do and, um, and, and be able to execute the plays you call, know how to against a multitude of fronts. I mean, you sit there and look at 22. I mean, you don't know where he's going to line up. He may be a defensive end. He may be an outside linebacker. He may be an inside linebacker. He may be a safety. It's, it's – uh, it's challenging, so we've really got to do a great job of just communicating and, 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 and making sure we're all on the same page. I mean, they're going to get some negative plays against us. I mean, we don't expect every single play to necessarily be a positive play. I mean, they're, they're good. Uh, we just got to make sure that we make enough plays in the run game and, and pass game ourselves to, to be able to move the football because not many teams have, have been able to do that consistently over and over and over again. Shane, um, I know there's been weight issues and injuries and stuff, but to the average fan out there that might say, why isn't this Jason Brown guy, why didn't he play earlier? And what can you say about, you know, the way he's sort of progressed the second half of the season? Yeah, I think he, I'm really proud of him in the way that he's progressed. As far as your first question, Gene, I think a lot of it was just um, – operating the offense and and not that we were too complicated for Jason so we don't need to start with the they were running a pro style offense that was too complicated for him to learn because that's not the case at all but just as far as the confidence to make calls uh to know exactly what we were doing for the other 10 guys out there to get all of them on the same page because there's a lot on the plate of the quarterback uh, he's he back in August he wasn't where he was where he needed to be you know right right now I mean I'll, I'll use a play in the I think it was the Eastern Illinois game. I mean, Eastern Illinois brought like a zero blitz, meaning like max pressure, and there's nobody uh, – there's one-on-one -on -one with EJ. And he had EJ wide open on the left side, and I'm pretty sure he, he, he didn't get rid of the ball to EJ, and he took a sack on it when it really should have been. If he just throws that ball up to EJ, it's probably a touchdown. Just little things like that. And I'm not saying that nobody made a mistake in the game against Eastern Illinois except him, but just things like that of just understanding – protections and pressures and things like that, that that he was a little bit behind on. Luke Doty gave us some athleticism at that position and was and is a good quarterback. Zeb had a little bit more experience just because he had been coaching, so that's why we went to Zeb. But it was never because we didn't have confidence in Jason. We always did. And and that was early in the season or and, and throughout. But he's bettered himself as the season has gone on. He's worked really hard to uh uh, become an even better quarterback and it's exciting to see the progress that he's 
that he's making. He did some really good things against Florida, and then Missouri's a new game, and then last week he did some uh, good stuff as well. And and uh, he's got to continue to continue to progress, and and we're going to need him to play well on Saturday because we're going to have to make some throws to win this game. Just uh, two quick ones. Uh, notice that you guys probably around like twelve twenty were still out on the field. Was that designed today, or is that because you know with, with Thanksgiving on Thursday as well? Did that play a role? No, nah, it really wasn't designed. We got started a little bit late. The head coach went a little bit long in the team meeting this morning. Um, it was pretty energetic, and we had some good stuff we were doing and talking about. We were recognizing a lot of the freshmen that are red shirting. Some of the uh, gains they've made in the weight room this season. Uh, they maxed out in, on, uh, on some uh, uh, tests in the weight room on Friday, so we were recognizing those guys and, and doing some fun things that we typically do in that team meeting on Tuesday. So that meeting went a little bit long, so we just pushed the start back by about 10 minutes uh, to start, and, and uh, uh, we had some competitive periods out there against each other, so sometimes when our guys get to – competing and talking and competing and talking. They don't want the period to end and, and you have to shut up JJ and you have to shut Zaquandre up and, and get them to the next period and things like that as well. So that's why it just kind of happened. And in your opinion, is uh, Thanksgiving a holiday or a meal? Thanksgiving is a holiday, in my opinion. Good question. Wow, don't know how to follow that question up. <laughs> uh, <laughs> What have you heard from uh, you know fans around the state? You know, with this game haven't been played in, in more than seven hundred days. What what's the expectation just in terms of how much that's just going to ratchet up the atmosphere and just the anticipation for this game even more? Yeah, um, beat Clemson. What I've heard, you know, since I got the job. I mean, I, there's a lot of excitement from their standpoint because it didn't get played last season. Uh, there's a lot of excitement from their Clemson standpoint, our standpoint, you know, just the opportunity to go compete against a program that uh, whose track record speaks for itself the last uh, 10 years or so and and um, and, and one that's a, a great program and has great players and coaches. So it's a great opportunity for us to go compete and and certainly it'll be a little bit more meaningful this year because it didn't get played last year, which was, you know, disappointing. I hated it, you know, as a coach and as a fan that last week or last year at this time you didn't have that rivalry rivalry uh, weekend. I mean, I think, I think in Oklahoma we were getting ready to play West Virginia on Thanksgiving week last year, and it ended up getting canceled because of COVID. But it's uh, you you miss the you miss the rivalry weekend. So I'm glad it's back, starting with the Egg Bowl on Thursday, and I think the Tar Heels and the Wolfpack on Friday night. So it should be a great weekend of um, of football. Thank you, sir. All right, thank you guys. Happy Thanksgiving.